SoFi Technologies has been taking a huge hit. Investors are selling at any cost currently. And I am pretty sure that for the most of us, we are in the deep red right now. But there is light at the end of the tunnel, folks. And I believe SoFi will have a great year 2020 as there are some catalysts which can turn around the current sell-off. Hi folks, it's Björn here and in today's video we will have a look at some of the major catalysts for SoFi this year and why SoFi and all the fintech sector is taking a huge hit right now. But first, in my video on Monday I was explaining why SoFi and the whole fintech sector is down right now and that it will not only affect this sector but as well the tech sector like Apple, Microsoft and so on. And if you haven't seen the video yet, I encourage you to watch it and no worries, I will pin it at the end of this one. As there I explain in detail why hedge funds and the big institutions are now selling this kind of stocks and in which sector they invest instead. And why? Follow it, what you should and shouldn't do in the current market situation. But I can tell you already that I said that the fundamentals of SoFi haven't changed and there is absolutely no reason to sell SoFi right now. But let's get started with the most important catalyst for 2020 for SoFi. And if you like the informations like this, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more daily updates and infos. So the past year has been brutal for us SoFi shareholders. As you can see, this stock has been highly volatile and I was explaining already why that is in my other videos. And if you haven't, it is because of the high amount of retail investors who are invested in SoFi percentage wise. And therefore it was hitting investors all over the place during the past year. In fact, as it stands right now, anyone that's invested in SoFi is holding on to a loss as the stock continues to move towards all time lows and just hit yesterday the 52 days low. But let's come to the first major catalyst. Revenue growth rate re-accelerate. As you can see, the management expects the acceleration of annual growth in 2020 with expected adjusted net revenue from 908 million to 1.5 billion in 2020, which is an increase year over year of 53% and an adjusted EBITDA from 27 million in 2021 to 254 million in 2020, which is an increase year over year of 44%. This provides us with some reassurance during the sell-off that SoFi is indeed still rapidly growing folks. Second, I know SoFi is not yet profitable and has a lot of debt, but that will change folks. Third, the bank charter. I know you guys cannot hear it anymore, but it's important. Owning a bank charter allows SoFi to use their deposits to finance their own loans. Lending is SoFi's biggest source of revenue and profits. Right now, they have to borrow money from the third party banks to finance the majority of their loans. These third party banks charge somewhere around two to two and a half interest to use their money. As soon as SoFi obtains the bank charter, they can use the deposits from their members to finance those loans. This improves their margins. Additionally, answering to and being regulated by a single entity, the OCC, is easier than being independently regulated by 50 individual states, which is what SoFi is currently has to do. This cuts down on administrative costs. But let's have a look at the following chart. EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization is a measure of a company's overall financial performance and is used as an alternative to net income in some circumstances. EBITDA, however, can be misleading because it strips out the cost of capital investments like property, plant and equipment. The dark blue bars are their earnings with the bank charter and the light blue bars are incremental earnings they get because of their expanded margins. So in simple terms between now and 2025 the bank charter is worth about 1 billion in profit margin between now and 2025 with current revenue, profitability, free cash flow, cash on hand and a whole host of important financial parameters will get a big boost with the bank charter. Fourth catalyst, 
a growing member rate means a growing member rate for their lending products and financial service products. So for its website and mobile app traffic, as we can see, it is expected that the traffic will increase in Q4 to reach 9.4 million visits for desktop or web and 5 million for the mobile app, which would indicate a total increase year over year of 57%. I know, some of you reported that the app isn't the best and has downsides and I'm confident that they will fix these kind of issues. And many other great catalysts like the upcoming Super Bowl, making brand awareness and so on will come as well this year. So let's have a look what the analysts are currently saying. We have 8 ratings with 6 buys, 2 holds and 0 sells with an average price target of $22 and 17 being the lowest and $28 the highest. Noteworthy is that Morgan Stanley's Betsy Grassic lowered her guidance to $20 from originally $24 in December. Hence, watch out for February, then there is the next earnings report coming out with an estimate EPS of 0.15. That being said, remember, SoFi is a high volatile stock with quite some risks but with a lot of future potential. But forget about that the stock price will reach this year hundreds of dollars, as I expect that we could see by year's end a share price between $24 and $30, bank charter included. So, if you still wonder why SoFi and the whole fintech sector took a huge hit and will likely continue to do so, I recommend to watch the video I mentioned at the beginning. There I explain everything, what you should do and shouldn't do in the current market situation with your tech and fintech stocks. That being said, please write in the comments what you think about the current situation and where you think SoFi will be by year's end and if I forgot some other major catalysts. As this would be interesting. And if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up so that other retail investors like you and me have the chance to see this video as well as the dang algorithm likes the stuff. And if you're on my channel for the first time, I would be happy if you would subscribe because I regularly produce videos and tutorials on the topic of stock analysis, investment and financial products to give you the opportunity to take your finances into your own hands. That being said, if you like the content and you want to support my channel with a few bucks so I can produce more videos, I will pin the link to my Patreon page in the comments below. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and as always, stay focused and don't get greedy. See you next time.